are so excited about you being part of our table talk today. Uh, I want you to like it, share it. Uh, Laura is with me, and we're going to talk about having peace in the midst of some storms. You know, life can throw you some storms, can it, Laura? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And uh, so the, I was looking today at Mark four thirty nine. I was looking at that this morning. And we all know the story of Jesus in the boat asleep, going to the other side. Of course, the storm came up, and uh, they woke him up in a frantic, we're going to die. And I love it. Jesus spoke and said, peace be still. Hush now to the storms. And uh, what I love is that our... We're the boat. Right. Thank God that Jesus is in the boat. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then guess what? He's not in your boat yet. And you definitely want him in your boat because in this life, you'll have some situations. And it's nice to have Jesus mm -hmm. in the boat. And uh, I know I've been going through some things that has had a, some bumps in the road. And I know you've been through things that's been some storms that Jesus had has carried us through. So I just want you to share what one of the victories that you had in a storm that Jesus helped you walk through. So we were sitting this morning going over some things in a Bible study that we were sharing this morning and and one of the questions came up and it was talking about the process and and yes. and your you're going through your process and what happens in your time of waiting and your process. And I just happened to bring up a moment in my life when, when I was walking through the time of my husband being sick, you know, my previous husband, Scott, that was sick. We, uh, you've all heard my story before, but, uh, we walked through a journey of him having cancer. And, um, there was a moment when we were waiting to whether see his man, his healing manifest in his body, or we were waiting mm -hmm. to see what was going to happen, you know, whether he was going to go to heaven or not. And, um, those days when I was sitting in the hospital room, it just seemed so lonely. It seemed like where it was almost like my yeah. world stopped and yes. everybody else's world continued on outside the walls of that hospital. But there were days that I was sitting in that waiting room and I would just be thinking, Time has just slowed down mm. for me. And I would be reading, you know, the word. I'd be meditating on the word. I would be listening to worship music. But there was this hallway that I would walk down every day going into the ICU unit and going in there to visit with him. And I would pass up under this sign in the hallway every day, just giving direction. Yes. Here's the waiting room. Here's the unit. Here's, you know, just direction on where you needed to go. And so I was taking pictures one day and I took a picture of this sign hanging there and it said, you know, this is the way to get to the ICU waiting room. And so it never really dawned on me what wow. that sign said until I was looking back through the pictures one day and I was just really having a heart to heart mm -hmm. talk with God one day. And I was like, Lord, what's going on? You know, we, you know, here my life has stopped. You know, I trust in you. Yes. I have put my faith in you. You know, we have been in ministry. Mm -hmm. We do what you have asked of, of us to do. And I popped across this picture and it was like it jumped out to me and it said, I see you waiting. And so it was like that picture spoke to me and it was almost like the Lord ignited something inside of me and said, you know what? Through all of your questions, through all of the days of you sitting here and wondering, he said, don't forget, I see that you're waiting. Oh, I love that, Laura. And so that that moment, man, it just really, it did something inside of me. Isn't, the, isn't it amazing that at that moment, a peace that passed all of your understanding came in? You know, we think peace is when we're not at war. Right. There's uh, there's not our children. We're not fighting with our husband. You know, all kind of stuff uh, is... We're, we're not hearing a lot of noises is, is peace, but peace is a person. Right. In the kingdom of God, Jesus, Jesus is the prince of peace. And the king was saying, Laura, yep. I see you. Yep. And in the midst of our storms, we he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Even when we maybe feel like, oh, my gosh, we're in chaos. Yes. Because there is things, times that we can have chaos going all around us and the winds howling. 
and we feel so shaken. But there can be an inner peace that passes all of your understanding. And I think it's when you realize, God, not only do you see me, but you will never leave me. Yes. You will never forsake me. And I am not alone in this. And I think the beautiful thing is, Laura, God gives us joy in the morning. He does. He does. And there were so many days that I may have been there in that waiting room by myself. You know, obviously other families yes. there would, you know, there. But there were days that maybe I was there by myself. But even those little moments, it sparked something inside of me that he let me know, no, you're not here oh, not by that. yourself. I see that you're there. I'm still there with you, which also made me think of the scripture in Isaiah where it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because you trust in him. Oh, you know, and so, yes. And I, and there was a scripture too, that somebody sent to me that in that time, you know, that some, some trust in chariots, some trust yes. in, in horses, but I trust in the name of the Lord God almighty, you know? And so just always day after day after day, continuing to put my trust in him. And that's where that perfect peace came into play. You know, isn't it amazing when you go to the word, you don't even realize it, but you're making a withdrawal, right? The word is a withdrawal. You can withdraw out of the word, the peace of God, because the word of God is the will of God. Yes. And when you take it, it is strength. You can actually, when you go to the Psalms, there's something about the Psalms, Psalms 23, and you've heard me say it over and over, Psalms 91. There's so many Psalms that when you are in troubled waters, that you just need to speak out loud, just read out loud to yourself, to hear yourself say, and it will calm. Absolutely. It will calm the, the waves. It will calm the winds because it calms the chaos that's going, and it will actually bring heaven down to you. Yeah. It's amazing to me how God can actually, through his word, bring his presence, because it's about his presence. It will bring heaven down. So I don't know what you may be going through a chaos. You may be in a hospital room right now or a waiting room right now, and things may be going on, but I want you to know you're not alone. Jesus wants you to know that he sees you, just like Laura was sitting there, and he was saying, Laura, I see you, and I'm here with you. And... You know, it is it is such a strength, an inner strength, that God does love us that much. Yeah. In this world, we will have situations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So I'm here to tell you there is a good cheer, and that's in the person called Jesus Christ. And we, we put our trust, like you said, some trust in horses. Yeah. This means we trust in the natural things. Right. But we want to trust in not just the natural things. That's good. But we put our trust in Father God, yeah. in the Lord Jesus, in the Word of God that is supernatural. And that's a different game changer. It brings, it, it brings things into this world is so temporary. It is but a vapor. And you realize, okay, Lord, let me center me back down. You know, the old anchor does hold. <laughs> and that anchor is Jesus. And I think when we are going through difficult situations and we are in the waiting room or we're in the waiting of a of a job change, we've got let go or they've or or something has happened and you're in a different situation and you're like, Okay, Lord, I don't want to be here, but it's kinda of like you're in a, a hallway, one door is closed. The other one hadn't yet opened, and you're standing there in a the hallway. What do I do in this hallway? And I love what Laura said earlier. She went to the Word. She went to prayer. She went to putting the worship music on. Yep. And Laura is a worshiper. <laughs> and uh, there's something about letting God, just putting that song in your heart in there, Laura. It is, absolutely. You know, it made me think about something too. Even during his process, 
of of him being in the hospital, I would bring DVDs of him preaching oh. and bring a DVD player into the room and put those on the television and let him watch himself ministering so that he could see because it was important for me to to let him see that because I would tell him, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yes. You know, for him to continue to see whatever you're feeling in your heart, you are. Yes. You know, you're not laying here, here in this bed laid up sick. You know, we're just going to continue to to declare, you know, what you are in Jesus. And oh, so, I love that. Faith. Having faith right. in having God. Having faith. Having ha faith. Putting the vision out there. Seeing beyond the natural to the supernatural. Oh, that's, that's powerful. Absolutely. So, you know, what are you putting before you? What are you putting before you? If you're fighting a sickness, put on your refrigerator, your, mir your mirrors, those healing scriptures. Yes. Put, see, see yourself, put pictures of you running. Put pictures of, of uh, strength. Put pictures of health. Uh, put before you what you declare. Put the vision before you. Without vision, we perish. And the vision is the word. The Lord said, I wish above all things that you would prosper, be in health as your soul prospers. We are covenant children. And the Lord's covenant says that he has good things for his children. He wants heaven to be brought to earth. So we're just here to tell you today, put your trust in the Lord. Yes. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus. Go to the Word. Find the promises. Put worship on. Fill your heart with worship because He is worthy to be praised. It's not about what you're going through because it's about He is worthy. It's amazing. Our worship changes the atmosphere to get us beyond where we are now to where we are going to be. And God says what? He says, I am working all things for your good. Yes. So I just want you to know, be of good cheer because the Lord is overcome. And he says, he's made us more than overcomers. So we love you. We want you to know God is for you. We're for you. And if you've not got a home church, we at Covenant Church would love to see you. Our hearts and our doors are open. The Lord Jesus has a plan. Laura, I'd like for you to just pray us out and just about for people to know that the Lord sees them right where they are, right in their condition, and he's got a way for them. He is the way maker. He is the promise keeper. He is the miracle worker. Yes, he is. Yes, well, Father, we love you, God, and we're so thankful for all of your many blessings. And Lord, today we have just come together, Lord, and we're sending out this podcast over the airways, Lord, and we're just so thankful, God, for all that you're doing. And right now, Lord, I pray, God, that if there's anyone out there under the sounds of our voices, Lord, yes, that Father. is maybe calling out to you, God, or maybe they're in a situation, Father, where they seem helpless, God, where they feel like they've lost all hope. God, I pray, Father, that they would turn their hearts and their minds to you, Lord. Maybe they feel like they're all alone, God. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would just reach out to where they are right now, God, that they would understand, Lord, that they are not alone, Father, that you are always there, God. You've never left us, Lord. You've never forsaken us, God, that you are always in our midst, God. I pray, Father, that if someone is down and they're depressed, God, yes. if they're downtrodden, God, if they feel like they've lost all hope, that they would understand, God, that, that you are our hope, God, that our hope and our peace lies inside of you, Jesus. I pray, Father, that if there's anyone there under the sound of our voice, God, that does not have you as Lord and Savior of their life, God, that that peace and that, only, and that hope only comes from having you as Lord of their life. And I pray that today would be the day that they make you the Lord of their life. Yes. And God, I pray, Father, right now, Lord, that you would just give peace, Lord, to those who are walking through trials, God. Well, Lord, your word tells us that we're going to face trials, God, but that we're overcomers, Lord, yes. that we're victorious in you, God. The battle is not ours, Father, but that it is yours, Lord, and that we are victorious, Lord. God, I thank you, Father, for being our hope and our peace, God. I thank you, Father, for, for just allowing us to to walk through trials, God, and as crazy as that sounds, Lord, you got, God, you give us the strength to walk through the valleys, God. You cause us to come through those things 
even stronger, Lord. Lord, when Jesus was in the wilderness, Father, he come out in the power of the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. And I just pray, Father, that we come out in greater power, Lord, and strengthened yes, in Lord. you, God. And I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our hearts and our lives and our mind, God, that we're strengthened in you, Lord, that your peace surrounds us like a shield. Yes. Your favor surrounds us, God. And Lord, we're strengthening you, Lord. We just thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless.